Red or 64 presents. A play toy that video review. Stay back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon 64 play guide and review. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at First Strike, developed and published by Elite Software in October 1989. This game was coded by Dave Thomas, and the graphics were by Bob Thomas. And together, those guys worked on Outlaws in 1985, a great game and highly praised. And they are best known for a 3D graphics engine, which created the staff of Karnath in 1984, and went on to create Entombed, which I certainly remember, in 1985. And they are also known for their great racing engine, which created Boogie Boy in 87, Live and Let Die, which was Boogie Boy on Water in 88, and First Strike in 1989. The design of this game was overseen by Peter Cook, who also saw the production of Space Crusade in 1992 for the Commodore 64, and the music was another game by Mark Cooksley, who has 42 games listed on the Lemon 64 website. By pressing the fire button, we gain access to 8 levels in this game, and we can take those levels on in any order. And all we have to do is to take down a prime target at the end of those, and those targets will be highlighted on the briefing there with a pretty useless map. But we can either return to those options, or we can fly that mission, and we are given a number of weapons. First of all, the sidewinders are automatically heat-seeking, they will lock on to targets, and the mavericks are a general air-to-air -air or air-to-ground missile, the bombs, of course, will take down heavy targets. It's always best to collect all the cannon mags and also a choice between the ECM or the extra gallon fuel tank. And in this case, I am going to choose the ECM, which was actually a mistake. First strike, all we have to do is to fly from one end of one huge level to the other and that will be interspersed and interbroken by waves of enemies. All we have to do is to select the correct weapon for those enemies and to line those up and by pressing the space bar or virtually any key on the keyboard that will toggle our weapons. And the middle weapon there is the chain gun and you can see blowing those aircraft away with the chain gun is relatively easy. Those great aircraft on this training mission aren't too much of a problem. And in this training mission what we have to do is to blow away over 60% of the enemies and then we'll get a high score rating and that means we can continue on to the main missions. And if we cannot, just like this, well unfortunately we can quit and try that again. But you can see the low level attacks there as we switch back to the cannons and take on all these tanks. We have a great range of airspace in this game and we can even fly above the clouds as we use the cannon again to take on all airborne enemies and we can either use the cannon or we can use the sidewinder missiles to lock onto those but I find it's always best to switch back to the chain gun whenever possible and then the next enemy in this case is yet another tank barrage so low level flying is actually a must. We don't have to take on every single enemy and every single attack wave, all we have to do is to survive. And that's the most important thing in this game. You can see some of those enemies will fly straight by and sometimes they will launch missiles in our direction and sometimes those are tracking missiles as well, which you'll see later on. But I switched to the sidewinders a little too late and you can see we are travelling at 270 airspeed and that's still too fast. 
to line those missiles up with those bombs there tried and failed to blow that missile cruiser up and the spy trawler if you missed that then unfortunately the next thing you will get is probably a tracking weapon and that will track you all over the map but in this early stage of the first level you will not get that tracking missile all you'll get is these dummy targets apparently on this very first training mission and those are interbroken by a runway which breaks up the action every so often where we can land, refuel and rearm automatically If the player can gain maybe 60 or 70 percent on this training mission then they can get through the game if not more practice will definitely be required but let's skip on through this anyway onto the second mission and yes i have completed this game end to end but that was a very long time ago so according to this we have to destroy a chemical weapons plant and that will appear in the second or the third section of the level so we won't see the main targets on the first section and yet again there we pick up the ECM which again was the wrong thing to do Taking a look at the instrument panel, we have the early warning reader on the left hand side with the ECM meter just under that and if we press F7 that ECM is supposed to light up and disappear within a number of seconds. Fortunately on this crack it doesn't appear to do that but on the original game it should do and you can see enemy sub there that gives us well a precious little time actually to select the bombs and to land those on target and I definitely recommend the general missiles, the Mavericks, for those subs if you can get those lined up on target. And in the centre you can see the weapons, the top one is the guided sidewinders, then the Mavericks, the general chain gun, the bombs and the last one are flares which you use to try and evade targeting missiles but those are pretty useless I find. And next to that we have fuel gauge which goes down in its own accord and the T is actually our thrust level. We'll start off there at 260 airspeed, whatever that is, knots, kilometers per hour. And we can actually press forward, the cursor forward key on the keyboard and that will speed us up as we shall see later on. So we can adjust the thrust in this game and we can speed this up to an immense speed. Finally we have A which is our altimeter and on the right you can see the radar and that R means that we have a radar problem, E means that we have engine damage, when G starts to flash that will mean our guns are jammed and F is fuel. You can see the F is flashing now and there is absolutely nothing we can do about that except of course to have bought the extra fuel before we started the mission. Swooping down to take care of these enemy aircraft on the landing strip. Unfortunately, we ran out of fuel and there's nothing we can do about that. And we didn't speed up beyond the 260, so we haven't actually burnt the fuel through fast flying. But we will see fast flight later on. And look at that. If we don't watch that radar, we can see radars behind will crash into us, and that's a life lost. Sometimes, if we just get a glancing blow from a tank that might destroy a gun or an engine and we can fly erratically in this game but in general you are either flying 100% or you're out so we are still flying 100% at the moment and we can dodge the flak simply by flying low on the radar and you saw we can even use mavericks against those tanks but we have to line those things up but we didn't have any chain gun ammo left
I think it's great that the refueling van appears and those palm trees are great as well and I think this game is certainly well produced. Unfortunately on the missile front the player will generally go for the same batch of missiles and actually I'm gaining sidewinders there, learning my lesson and gaining the extra fuel tank. this second stage of the first mission you can see we are now traveling 310 by default and again we can push the cursor forward key or the equivalent on the PC keyboard maybe it's the at and the backslash key but pressing those will speed us up but in the main it's avoiding all this action and trying to blow them up before they blow you up and sometimes that's very fast and very fun sometimes though it's very difficult and in this 3D environment you have to be on your toes and don't dive straight into the action or otherwise you'll get blown up. Luckily we won't crash out if we land into the ground because we cannot crash into the ground in this game but when we cross water we'll find cliffs and we can crash into lighthouses and cliffs and with that radar, if we don't take that radar out then we'll find a very difficult missile and there it is, a radar guided missile I've tried to select the flares in a desperate attempt to get rid of that thing, but it didn't work. Because I don't have VCM, I actually picked up the fuel, but even if I did have VCM, it doesn't actually stay on on this crack, so that's very difficult. And the enemy rockets there, you have to rise above those, get above clear of level. But that's my meagre failed attempt. Let's type in our name onto the high score table, and let's try it for a second time to take a look at this game. Yes, let's take a look at the final mission, and it's important to take down a bridge. Unfortunately, we won't get to see that bridge, but let's try again with those Sidewinder missiles, and unfortunately again, the Sidewinders are pretty useless, and they don't really lock onto those targets either. I've chosen to select Sidewinders instead of the Mavericks is to try and practice with those and to show how hard or easy that would be and it really is difficult unless you line those planes up dead on and there's no point using those except for the red fighters the grey fighters again you just have to watch out for those and make sure that you don't collide with those from the rear and these helicopters of course will fire a battery of heat seeking missiles sometimes you can avoid those sometimes you cannot but it's important to find the spy trawler, otherwise if you don't, you won't be able to avoid that heat seeking missile and if you can, all you need to do is fly very fast. You can see I've pushed the cursor key forward and now we are travelling at 1060, but that was not enough to get rid of that guided missile. So I really love the graphics on this game, I like the smoothness of the graphics, particularly high speed. And I like the fact that there are three stages in each mission broken up by that great runway and those amazing sound effects really add a lot to this game and I absolutely love the landing and the taking off sequence and the music is pretty great as well remember Mark Huxley created music for many elite games including 1942, Bomb Jack, Ghosts and Goblins, Overlander, Salamander and Space Harrier but taking a look at this game I rate this highly and I think it's got great playability. I, well, sometimes the locking on there is a bit difficult and that could have done with locking on a bit more, but I think the variety is great and the user reviews were certainly great for this game in general, although Commodore user gave this 61% the month before it was released. The current score on the Lemon64 website is 76%. The Games Machine gave this 80%. BG gave first strike 81% and Zap originally gave this game 80% but when they came to review the budget priced game they gave this game 90% saying that this was faster and smoother than Afterburner on the C64 it's more action packed and they revealed that fans had written in claiming that this game should have deserved a sizzler so they gave this game 90% 
I think it definitely deserves 8 out of 10 there. 8 out of 10 is the average. I certainly think it deserves that, and it's deep enough with just a smattering there of strategy with the missiles and the fuel. Let's try this level on maximum thrust, and now we are travelling at 1110, which is probably as fast as we can go, but unfortunately that does not mean that we won't get hit, it just means that we have to fly very quickly, and sometimes it's easier to avoid certain things, flying very quickly, and when those planes overtake, sometimes they fly away quicker if you are flying very quickly, and obviously avoiding things like the helicopters, but look at that, avoiding the cliffs at the last minute as well. And now we fly onto Arctic territory, we find trees, and it's great to see those Christmas trees there in the Arctic, those evergreens, and well, we can try to lock those missiles on the tanks, so we can do that, but usually we can get rid of the items one way or the other, and we've just blown up the radar as well, which doesn't help. So usually the game gives us at least two ways to blow up an enemy, and if we can't do that, we can always avoid things, Unless, of course, it's the tracking missile, which you saw I blasted and it didn't do anything. It's also a pity that we don't get any more fuel back when we explode and we are in danger of running out of fuel yet again. So sometimes the fuel comes at a premium and flying at those high speeds does burn it away. So sometimes there isn't much you can do and colliding with those enemies, well, that's an early death. So that's me completing this game or as far as I can get on this playthrough. So I hope you appreciate the depth and the quality of this great game by Elite and I hope you'll check this out for yourself. Thank you once again and hope to see you again sometime soon.